Hey everybody, it's Angel from Halo Inspirations. We give you inspirations to help you spread beauty and joy through your quilting journey. Happy hump day. Whoop, whoop. Happy Wednesday. Yes, we love our Wednesdays because why? We have a new video with a new project. Woo, woo. All right. And what are we doing? We are making this super adorable window attic is the name of this block but it looks like this window going on inside the center of this quilt this is the project for today and i am so stoked to show it to you so where did i get my inspiration well i want to tell you about that because if you would have asked me 10 years ago if i'd ever make a quilt for a dog i would tell you you've lost your mind but guess what? I must have lost mine because that's exactly what it is. It's a quilt for my daughter's puppy dog. Uh, the dog's name is Pepper and Pepper loves blankets. She sleeps under them. She curls up with them. She drags them across the room and puts them in different places. So I thought I'm going to make a quilt for our puppy dog or her puppy dog. So Little Miss Pepper is getting this quilt. That's where it came from. And the reason why I chose this particular one if you look in this, inside what this window, if you look inside of here, it this is actually a panel. And when I saw the panel, it's got this little rescue ride uh, bus and all the little pets on top and a sign that says next stop home. And I just thought it looked like something if I was sitting in my living room and I'm looking out the window, this rescue ride is driving down the road in front of my house and I see the sign that all these puppies and all these pets are getting their home. And I just thought how adorable it would be to put it in the attic window block to just do exactly that and make it look like we're looking out our window, okay? So that's where all this inspiration came from. Um, it is super adorable. So let me tell you about the things that you'll need. If you're going to make this quilt, I'll tell you exactly the fabric that you'll need to make this quilt. However, I do want to tell you, this is a simple nine patch here in the center of the attic window. The method can be used with any panel. However, your size of your blocks may change and the number of blocks that you have may change. And if all of that is true, then that means all your fabric requirements are going to change. But you can take the method and learn the method to do this with any panel. OK. All right. So we do need this panel. This panel, which you will see in its entirety um, in the next clip, it is Next Stop Home by Leanne and Caitlin of the whole country caboodle. You know how much at Halo we love them uh, for Henry Glass Fabrics. Okay, so that is one panel needed. Now, we also have three colors going on here to give us the effect of looking out of a window. So we've got chocolate brown, paprika, and this is premium jet black, okay? All three of those are Kona fabrics uh, by Robert Kaufman. What will you need for each? You, I have to look at my notes to make sure. Of the chocolate brown, you will need a quarter of a yard. For the paprika, you will need a quarter of a yard. And then for the premium jet black, you will need a uh, three quarter, no, nope, half a yard. You will need a half a yard. So a quarter, a quarter, and a half, okay? So there's all of the window fabric. Then for the border, this is actually going to, it's a four inch finished border once it's finished. And this is cream paw print by the whole country caboodle for Henry Glass. Same line, it's from that Next Stop Home line that they have so adorably put together. And I think it really tied in with all the colors. It's got brown hearts, red hearts, green paw prints, about brown paw prints and there's different kinds of animal prints in there but I'm no animal expert I just think this is an adorable adorable fabric you'll need three quarter yard to get a finished four inch border around this quilt top this quilt top will is currently one is done it finishes at 38 by 44 okay so understanding that it is um, going to need with a four inch overage. Now I've never done that. I've, I don't think usually I tell you exact and then let you figure out how much overage you need and how much more fabric you need. But I'm going to go ahead with four inches this time. 
four inch overage all the way around so you can send it to your long arm or you can quilt it on your domestic with that extra overage it's going to take three yards three yards of your backing fabric now most people use two and a half inch binding um, they're strips of two and a half inches so with that this is completely all the way around for your binding will take a half a yard i'm personally going to use this chocolate brown i think it'll tie it in real nice um, but you'll need a half a yard for your binding now i want to tell you all of the um, fabric besides the panel i always take measurements and i base it on 40 inch usage of fabric okay so what does that mean that means when you took off both ends of your salvage you had 40 inches to work with that's the measurements that i base off of okay just to give you a heads up because you fr your fabric may have more um, it may have 42 inches worth so that's an extra two inches on each strip so <clears throat> i just wanted to give you a heads up on that that's what we base those measurements off of okay and if there's something quirky and i want to give you a heads up i'll let you know but other than that that's the things that you're going to need again you don't have to memorize that because there is a supply list that is free it'll tell you exactly the fabric we used and it'll tell you how much all inside a free supply list you can find on our website drop down in a description box and for those watching tv i'll put it right here on the screen so you don't have to memorize any of that but feel free to take notes if you're not wanting to get the free supply it's free guys you don't have to give me nothing it's absolutely free just for you okay so yeah, that's it. I think I've said everything. Are you ready to make this with me? Because I'm ready to show you how. So let's go ahead and get this started. I'll see you in just a sec. Okay, so the first thing I wanted to show you is the actual panel. So this is what the actual panel looks like. And this is me cutting up the center of what I want to be in the window. I'm actually going to use this part and this part down here uh, as part of the border, I believe. So well, how did I get here? And you can do this with any panel, okay? Any one of them. But what I did is I took my measuring tape and I simply measured inside of this square or rectangle. It's actually a rectangle, right? And what I found was going all the way across was something, I don't even know, 22, 23, something like that. So I really try, and then it's even further, it's like 24 and a half going all the way to the edges. So I really wanted something that was easily divisible and I didn't want this in the window pane. So I took it down and this is what I ended up doing. I don't know how well you'll see it, but there's these little black lines that are outlined both on the inside and outside of the dark blue line. And going from this inside black line to this inside black line was 21 inches. Okay, so that's divisible very easily by seven, right? Then I measured the top and bottom. And as you can see on this one, I actually took it out above this blue line and a little bit below the blue line to, it's that squiggly thing again, all right? It's this little black line that outlines that area. And from that black line to this black line was 27 inches. Perfect, that's divisible by nine. So I know that when I cut this up, I'm gonna get seven by nine squares or rectangles, okay? So you just wanna find a number, because if you've got a bigger panel, you might be dividing it by six. There's a lot of, you just make it easy for yourself. Now, if I wanted more than three by three, because that's what I'm gonna get, 21 divided by seven inches is three, so I'm gonna get three times seven inches, and 27 divided by nine is also three, so I'm gonna get a, a nine patch, right? If I wanted to do it a six patch, so six by six where my rectangles were a little different, I would divide that by two. That would be half of seven is three and a half. So each one would be three and a half and I'd get six of them in 21 inches. And going down would be 27, um, which was nine divided by two. There's a lot of math here, right? It's four and a half. So you would get three and a half by four and a half rectangles and you'd get 36 total. Six going across, six going down. Yeah, I had to think about it. I didn't want to, I want to make this fun. I want to make this fast for myself. So I'm leaving it as a nine patch. Okay. 
So my rectangles, that's 21 inches is what I cut from the inside black line to the out, down, the other inside black line, that's 21 inches. And then the outside black line to the outside black line is 27 inches. So I, I, I'm going to hope to show you, I'm going to set up the camera so you can watch me cut real fast. I'll have it speed it up. But basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this panel to my cutting mat and I'm going to cut from this corner down nine inches straight across. Go another nine inches straight across. Two cuts, guys. Two cuts. Then, once I have those strips, those nine inch strips, right, I'm going to cut each strip seven inches and then seven inches again, each one. Now you can put them on top of each other and you can lay them out and all that stuff, but I, I'm not very good with that. I always shift my fabric. So I'm going to do each strip by itself. That will give me nine, okay, nine of them. Each of them will be seven inches this way and nine inches down, each one of them. And that begins our panel window, all right? So I'm gonna take you to my, I'm hoping, <laughs> hoping I get the camera all set up for you and I'm just gonna speed up the video, but you'll watch me cut. Now, what is very important when you do this, take note, make some kind of pile with a pin, with a clip, with a piece of paper, which row is which, and keep them in order. Is it the end of the world if you get them all mixed up? No, but it'll be very much of a puzzle piece. So it is also a good idea to take a picture of the panel before you start. So if something happens and all your pieces get mixed up, you know exactly where they go because it could be a little tricky. Having nine, patches instead of 36 patches will definitely make it a lot easier to figure out which is which, right? But once you start getting into some bigger numbers, it's really, really important that you keep organized. So I'm going to take this over to the cutting board. I'm going to get my strips and my rectangles cut. So I'll see you in just a sec. Okay, so I've got my three rows of three and I do have them labeled. The one on the left is on the top. The middle block is in the middle and the bottom block is the one on the far right. So I'm going to try my very darndest to keep them all organized. But the next step on every single one of these, hold on, let me pull all of these up here. So I'm using, this is Kona Paprika. Okay, and I have cut two and a half inch strips and then I cut them seven inches long. And I'm just going to simply start with my first one and I'm going to do all nine the same exact way. So I'm going to take my seven inch by two and a half and I'm going to do a quarter inch seam right along here. And when I go to press, I'm going to press towards the bottom or towards the paprika. Okay, so I'm going to get that done off camera and then we're going to go to the next step. Okay, at this point, all of your blocks should look like this. Okay, and if you measure one side, it will equal 11 inches. So that's real important because now we're going to go to the next step and that's you're going to cut two and a half inch strips again. This is a dark brown that I'm using. So it's two and a half inch strips by 11 inches. The same length as the strip, okay? Once you add the bottoms here. So <clears throat> cut those and then out of the same fabric down here, which for me is paprika, you're going to want to cut two and a half inch squares, okay? So that's the next of your cutting. All right, now what you'll do with these two and a half inch squares, you're going to lay them down. You're gonna grab a ruler. Now this is how I do mine. You might have a different method and that's fine. The silicone mat is really sticky, so bear with me. 
Now when I draw my line, y'all know me, I'm going to draw corner to corner on one side. I'm going to use my disappearing ink pen. Okay. And when I stitch, I'm going to stitch right next to it on the side that I'm going to cut. So how do we line and where do we line this up and what do we do? Okay, so you're going to take your 11 by two and a half inch and you're going to lay this down just like so. And you're going to sew corner to corner on the side we're going to cut and we're going to cut on this side. So make sure you give yourself enough room by st stitching down on the side closest to the one you're going to cut. I have one ready. And let me move this mat for you because that way you'll be able to see exactly how I do this. All right. <clears throat> so again, when you do this, make sure you flip it first before you cut and make sure that it's actually going to cover all your sides. Okay. Once you've done that, once you're good to go, you're going to line up your ruler. I actually line mine up on the straight line. You can do it on your sew line. That's fine too. And you're going to cut that edge. Now, I want to point out something very, very important here in just a second. When I went ahead and pressed these, I actually pressed towards the dark side. Okay. And that's what it's going to look like. Okay. When, once that's done and you want to be careful because there is some bias over here. Okay. This is what we're going to, well, not yet. Let me, <laughs> let me tell you what we're going to do next. So once you have pressed it going towards the brown or towards the longer strip, you're actually going to lay this right on top and you're going to stitch a quarter inch along this side. Okay. Now there's nothing really nesting over here. You're just going to have to trust the method. Okay, it will, there's a quarter inch worth over here that they will form. Now let me show you what we're doing here. Okay, so just as we talk about, you want to take your strip, once you have your stitch and flip on board, line it up on the right side of your block, and then you're going to stitch that quarter inch, and then when you open it up, you're going to want to press towards the brown. They're all going to be towards the brown and they're all going on the right side of every block. Okay, so what does that mean? We have nine blocks in my panel, so you will need nine of the two and a half by 11s, and you will need nine of the two and a half inch squares that match your bottom color, okay? Mine's paprika, so that's why I have the two and a half inch in this color, and I have nine of these, so nine total and then stitch them all nine on the right side once you get your stitch and flip on board. Now, I wanna talk about something really quick. What you need to be very careful about is that you are, you are sewing, make sure I grab the one white run here, and stitching on the correct side, okay? So that it forms that pretty mitered corner, okay? Now, when you do that, for your first one, I would experiment. I got bling everywhere, guys. Okay, so here's one, for instance, that has another line on it, okay? If I lined up where I was going to stitch on this side and I went to flip it, notice that that doesn't look right. That's not the look we're looking for. If I turn that and it the line goes towards the outside here and this one is up in the corner towards the block when i sewed on this line and went to flip it it would be on the correct side and i will show you i actually did one wrong that's why i'm telling you <laughs> and you can't fix it so be very cognitive of that first one, well, of all of them. You need to watch every single one of them. And I would just be sure that I would use my first one as a guide, okay? 
because you're going to do this on the right side of all nine blocks. So I'm going to get mine done off camera. And when we come back, I will share with you the next step and I'll put these all in a design board so you'll see me up close and personal. But until then, until next time, I'll see you in just a okay. second. Okay, so we're at the next spot. This is what all the blocks should look like without this black strip over here, right? So that is our next step. Now I'm gonna break down the sashing that is supposed to look like the inside of the window. I'm gonna break it down. I don't like long seams, but we'll talk again when we come back a little bit about that. But in the meantime, um, what you'll need, now we do know that this is 11 inches, okay? We've known that because we did our stitch and flips. So you need 12 of one and a half by 11 inch black strips, okay? That's your inside of your window. And you're gonna sew on the first row, I mean on the first column, not the first row, on the first column, you'll wanna sew them on both sides, okay? Then on each of the others, we're just gonna sew them on the left, okay? So just this column, will you sew one and a half inch strips on both sides, okay? Then we'll come back again. I'm gonna get mine done off camera. So when we come back, it'll be like magic and they'll all be finished. And then we'll talk about the next steps. But one more thing before I go on, I wanted to talk about these colors. You don't have to pick these colors. The idea behind this one being lighter is kind of a sun um, coming in and looking through the window. So you'll see a lighter color on your window. <laughs> Um, and, but the biggest thing is you want enough contrast between them. So if you're not going to pick brown and paprika from Kona, that's totally cool because maybe your quilt doesn't um, do good with these colors, right? Uh, I tried to pick something a little, I wanted this red, I ain't going to lie to y'all, but I was worried that if I did red, um, and now I'm looking at it now that it's all broken up, it would have been fine. but. Uh, because I have a red that matches really, really close to this, but I am very happy with these two colors together because I do feel like it does give a little bit of an appearance of uh, a little lighter based on some sun. Now, obviously my window has a little shade. It's not direct sunlight, so we're not getting white. We're not getting yellow. We're getting a uh, plain and simple, easy peasy kind of look. Um, with a lighter color. It looks a little brownish next to brown. It's like a, I don't even know, a burnt orange. <laughs> so, <clears throat> go ahead um, and at this point, you'll want one and a half inch strips, 11 inches long, both sides of your blocks on the first column and every column after just the ones on the right. So I will see you in just a sec. Okay, so we got our strips all in the correct place. And remember we did left and right on the first column and just on the right on the second column. So now we've got, you got a couple of choices. You could just put your rows together and then do one long sashing. But y'all know me, I really do prefer to break the sashing up because I don't like long strips because stuff happens. Um, and so I like to break mine up. So that's what I'm doing here. You don't have to do this, but if you're walking along and prefer this method as much as I do, I'm gonna walk it through. So we're gonna, on this block, this is actually 11 inches going across. So for this whole column, you'll need four more 11 inch, one and a half inch strips, okay? And we'll put one on the top, one on the top of this one, and then one on the top and the bottom of this one. Okay, so there's where the four more comes in. So a total of 16 one and a half by 11 inch strips for the whole kit and caboodle, okay? Then these blocks that only have one one and a half inch strip, 
they measure at 10 inches, okay? So you'll need eight 10 inch, one and a half inch strips, okay, of, of the black. And I'll put one on the top, one on the top of this one, and one on the top and bottom of this one, and exactly the same on this row. So the bottom row gets a top and bottom of the strip, whether it's 11 inch or 10 inch, okay? Just so you know, I did press all of these left and right strips, I forgot to tell you, and I pressed them all going away from the block. These strips on top and bottom are a little different. So on this entire column, I will press them all going up. So even this one down here is going towards the block, okay, because they're all going this direction. This number two column, they will all go down, okay? And the last column, they will all go up, okay? So that way things are going to nest and that'll make your life so much easier if you do this method. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that off camera and we'll have one more to get the center done and we'll talk about a little bit more after that. So I'll see you in just a sec. Okay, so once we have our tops and bottoms and lefts and rights and all the black strips to really start to outline, you can start to see how this is going to form our window. So at this point, guys, it's just a nine patch, okay? So I will break it up just like I normally do because these are pretty big blocks. So I will definitely be sewing a four patch here, a two patch here, a two patch here, I'll sew those onto the four, I'll sew this one onto the two, and the only long seam I'll have is one of these, because y'all know I don't like long seams. I try to chunk it up when they're long and big as much as possible. So I'm gonna get this done, and then we're gonna talk about the border a little bit, and then we'll be done. So I'll see you in just a sec. Okay, I've decided to make this really simple. So I'm just basically gonna start to add my borders now. Yes, she is done and pretty. What do you think? Isn't she fun? Okay, so I wanted to give, I wanted to step in here for just a sec and let you know that this should finish at this point right now, the way this is right now, it is 30 across and 36 down, okay? So I basically am doing a four and a half inch border here and I'm cutting four strips with a fabric. Make sure when you do your borders that you actually do your own measurements. You could have been slightly off with your quarter inch or shift may have happened. So always remember when you do your borders to measure your own uh, quilt top, okay? So I'm, I've got a, I got maybe an idea. We'll find out in the next clip. I'll let you know and ask you a question, but until then guys, I'll see you in just a sec. Okay, she's all done. I'll have the borders on. Just so you know, I will use this brown for the binding because I think it'll help tie it in. Um, super cute, love it. But here's the question of the hour. So what I did was I took the rescue that came at the top of the paneling and I put it on some fusible and I'm thinking about putting it on top or I will do it with the loved. So I think it separates everything a little bit and it looks really good right there. But um, this also could be very cute because who doesn't love their puppies? I know my daughter loves her pepper. So that's without it. Just what just curious about what it is that you think I think I need to add it. I think it'd be super cute, which I will do with um, it is fused. So I'll applique that on. And I personally, I think I'll do it before I quilt it. Now the bonus, if you do it after it's bound, quilted and bound, and then you put the applique on, number one, your quilting will be very fluid underneath. Uh, but number two, on the back, it'll also outline the word rescued or loved or, or whatnot. Of course, it'll be backwards though, right? Um, so I haven't decided. It'll be a wait and see but I'd love to hear your opinion. I hope you like this. Now I did put a little bit larger border on because I wanted enough room for the 
puppy. I know this sounds so weird. I'm making a quilt for a dog. Um, to be able to lay on or drag around because her dog tends to drag quilts around and just really enjoy the quilt for them. And I didn't want to do anything super crazy, super hard because honestly, this quilt is going to be dragged around quite a bit. But yes, this is how we do that attic window block uh, with a panel. Super cute. I think it turned out fantabulous. I hope you enjoyed this. If you like this video, don't forget to like, press the little thumbs up button. And if you're new to this channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and then the bell to let you know when it is that we upload a new video. That bell will do that. Ting! So at any rate, also today, again, I will be on live at 3 p.m. Eastern time. Now the really cool thing is we are going to try and go live on both platforms, both Facebook and YouTube at the same time. So no matter where it is that you like to join in with the live quilting and answer session, uh, that will be available to you no matter where you go, okay? So cross our fingers, everything works out. I hope to see you there at 3 p.m. Eastern time as I'm here in Virginia for that live Quilting and Answers. But next week we have another video and until then, and until next time, may you all continue to be inspired, productive, ever so joyful, Never stop believing and never stop making your dreams in quilting come true. I love y'all. Thank you for stopping by. Happy quilting. Whoop, whoop. And happy Wednesday. See y'all next time.